Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to another uh, episode of River City 93. Um, quotation marks, we haven't had a name for the women's show yet, so I can't introduce it like that. Pretty much like the W League RVA team, which has no name. But the branding event is March 13th. So if you are a W Club, what is it, W Club Founders member? Which is lengthy. Is that, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, Founders. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you're one of those, make sure you check your email where you got an RSVP for that. And we'll make sure to be there. Um, But joining me on the show is a lady who was ranting about uh, the identity crisis that is eventually going to happen pretty much just like in Marvel. It is Kate. How are you, ma'am? Hi, I'm good. Happy to be here. Happy to be talking more now that we have more news to talk about. We actually have real things to discuss and not just hopes and dreams. Um, yeah, we get kind of scared there for a moment. But, uh, <laughs> Were we ever going to get a real piece of concrete news? But now, now they're, they're spoiling us. We've got we've got schedules. We've got opponents. We've got at least two players. Things are good. Right. Right. Also, another question for you, Kate. Uh, do you hate twins that have different identities? Do I hate you... twins with different identities? Yeah, because, I mean, for those who don't know, Kate was going on a lengthy rant about how the identity crisis that is about to happen is hilarious, is about to ruin everything. I just wanted to know. <laughs> I honestly haven't met many twins, so maybe this will be my first real experience with twins with different identities, both either yeah. human or otherwise. What? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy who just said what is that? Hi, Matt. I miss you. Yeah. Uh, you're, are you asking her if she hates all like you know, non same gender twins? Because no, well, I mean, I'm just saying twins in general. Are, are, like if they have different what? identities, it can't be like sitting on a rocker. Like, don't you like the same thing? Do, do you think that identical twins have identical identities? They could. I, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. If they're if they're good twins, they do. Well, by rule, doesn't one of them have to be the evil twin? And you know that because they have a little little goatee. <laughs> True. True. There you go. Anyway. 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 Um, we had a lot to talk about, guys. So first of all, the W League team has decided to uh, drop some pretty much good news upon us. Um, we already got the Richmond Kicker schedule. Plus with the cup games, all that stuff. And then we got this oh darn it. This beautiful thing. If I can pull it up. You know what? This is gonna work. There we go. Technology at its greatest. The W League schedule. So we got this beautiful thing out. So now we know when we're playing, we know what nine out of the 12 games. Don't know how playoffs are gonna work, but let's focus on this. So, Kate, I hand it over to you. Take us through all the excitement and everything that is going on with the W League. Yeah, so I've done a little bit of research into the teams that will be playing this season. Um, most of these teams are coming from the W League already. They've either been founding members or joined last year. There's one team that's joining W League from United Women's Soccer, which is a sort of competitor league that is the Lancaster Inferno so they're the only ones who aren't sort of tried and tested against this group of opponents we've got two new teams W League RBA and Charlottesville Blues um and just a bit of context for how things went last season in the Mid-Atlantic Division um Eagle FC by far and away the best team in the division they made it all the way to the league semifinal so they won the division they won the Eastern Conference and then lost to North Carolina Courage U23 in the league semifinal. North Carolina went on to lose the league final. Um, so they were they were pretty good. Um, they had a solid – where am I looking? 13 wins, one draw, no losses. So pretty solid record there. Um they also had a goal differential of plus 30. So scored a lot of goals, won a lot of games. And just right. below them, yeah, Christos FC also. I would say these two teams were head and shoulders above the rest of the team. Christos um, 
was a little below um, in their overall schedule, but they did have nine wins and three losses, three draws. Um, sorry. Um, so they also won a lot of games, scored a lot of goals, plus 25 gold differential. So um, everybody else was a solid mix of these losses and draws um, further down in the table. So what that means is that last four games of the regular season might be tough depending on how well Eagle and Christos um, play this season, how many players they return, um, whether they are as successful as they were last year in terms of their goals and their wins. Um, but the, the top, the first four games, definitely more of an opportunity. Marauders finished fifth out of six. Uh, six, Charlottesville, obviously new, North Virginia finished um, four out of six. So opportunity to pick up points early in the season, depending on um, how well the kickers, uh, W League RVA comes out, which I had a team name to refer to them by. No, nope, so, nope, that will be the team name. <laughs> Even when they drop their brand, that will be the team name. <laughs> So it's an interesting one. It's an interesting. One. We'll we'll hope Kimmy has already said that she hopes to go out and win the whole thing. Um, so hopefully, those first few matches we see that attacking intent um, build up some momentum that takes us into those more difficult matches that finish the season. All right, all right. No, that seems pretty. I mean, for what it seems, it seems like a kind of balanced schedule for the most part. I, w I just realized by looking at that schedule, I didn't realize it at first, that we don't play, uh, who is it, Northern Virginia and, the, what is it, Parallax? We only played them once. Accent. Ah, there we go. Yes. Uh, the P word team. Um, <laughs> we only played them no, once. Team. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Which is a bit disappointing because Patuxent was awful last season. Um, and had a solid 0, 0, and 11, so 11 straight losses, didn't win a single game with a goal differential of negative 58. So that Jeez. is depending on how well they return. Um, that how well? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a, a, a disappointment for a new club that we only, we only end up playing them once. And of course we play all the, Really good teams twice. Yeah. Um, so for me personally, I'm gonna ask you this like are there any teams in the W League that you're looking like most forward to? Like, do you think it can be a potential rival? Like, I feel like we're gonna get the Richmond and Charlottesville game. They're gonna push that as a rivalry. But is there any game that you're like, all right, this is one the fan base is gonna latch on to? I don't know if I go that far with it. I mean Nova could be another one because it's the other in state. In, incorrect. The correct answer is Christos. I'm getting there. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's the petty, you know, uh, you know, we need to just load off, like, I don't care, you know, pay some players on the side, you know, to, you know, come in as a ringer, you know, for a game or two and just beat that ass down because they deserve it. Right. I'm still better about the U.S. Open Cup loss. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. it's going to be an interesting oh, one yeah. since so many of the teams are close by. Um, mm -hmm. That I I would assume that there's going to be a decent amount of overlap from the universities. A lot of the teams are recruiting from as well. So it'd be interesting more so than the kickers if there's more like familiarity between the players. And, you know, if they're playing against their teammates, or they're playing against you know team girl players from rival schools themselves. So if they're bringing any rivalries, like as a player um, and from their college programs into yeah. it as well. So it's yeah. Can a you, lot of you tip me off to Eagle. So I'm looking through their you know, Twitter and it looks like they've already announced just a, a certain number of players, but it looks like a lot of them uh, are from the central PA area. So they've probably known of each other, pl played against each other, you know, through club and everything. And uh, got to think that's probably a, a decent model for a summer league where presumably, you know, Come on home, you know, stay with mom and dad for a couple months before you go back off to college and play some soccer in the meantime. So hopefully, uh, you know, the Richmond United pipeline will, you know, give us some good outcomes with that. 
Yeah. They got another combine coming up too, right? Mm. The fifth? Yeah. So maybe that will that probably will yield a couple of more players. Um since we're also nerds, I'm gonna get to the players later. But since we're also nerds, we kind of already broke down what day these games are being played. Um, Matt, you were talking about it earlier, but are there any overlaps with the W League schedule and the kicker schedule? Unfortunately, yes, there are. So, twelve W League games. Uh, we have three conflicts as of right now. One of them, not really worried about because. It's an away game you know, for the W League team, and it's an away game for you know, the kickers, and that away game is out in, at Fuego, so it's probably going to be like 10.30 at night or something absurd like usual anyway. So that was probably irrelevant. You know, that, so that was June 15th. Unfortunately, the home, op- home opener, the actual franchise opener for the W League team, May 11th, Home game at six o'clock. Kickers are away at Chattanooga at seven thirty that evening, uh, and I don't think Chattanooga is probably going to you know, do us a solid and move the game so that way we don't have any conflicts. So maybe that that game could become like a four p.m. kick. That might be cool. Uh, I don't know. Just saying. Uh, the other. Conflict is on June 1st, also Saturday, W League home at 6 p.m. Kickers away this, oddly enough, also in Tennessee, this time at Knoxville, 7 p.m. So, again, that game could get moved up a little bit. That might be beneficial for all involved. You know, go to the W League game, maybe set up a watch party, you know, at the stadium right after or at a walkable spot from the stadium. And have a nice double header in that okay. that regard. Free idea. <laughs> we'll try. We'll see. We'll see how that much that works out. Um, yeah. Okay. That's a little bit of confidence. It's a lot better than what I thought it would be. Because I remember they said there won't be any double headers. So my initial fear was that it was going to be like Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. But from what it looks like, I mean, outside of the game on the 11th, um, this W League roster is, needs to have a lot of depth because they're playing what, like, two games a week or something like that. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. it's only what a seven week season as it is. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. tight. It's tight. Just yeah. pray for no injuries. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, yeah. Starting later yeah, the season, so. yeah. So the season kicks off a week earlier than that so they're yeah and then they've got a nice two-week break right after the first one so that's a little interesting because of how condensed it is sort of at the back end there's a little bit the first three weeks of the season are very cold and then um, yeah you get a memorial day week yeah memorial day weekend to end of june is you know turn around play turn around play like can't imagine there's gonna be much practice time going no, uh, it's going to be rest and recovery. That's that's all. Rest, recover, rest, recover. Um, outside of that, W League team has also signed uh, two players. Um, Kate, I'm going to let you break down the two players that we have signed so far. One that I'm very excited for because he will become Jamaica's future striker. We are – our wildest dreams were fulfilled. I think some people called us – I don't remember who the haters were now, whether or not they were you know, on this very podcast or not, um, that we might that we might land um, a Simmons on either on both squads. Um, so that was uh, very exciting to sort of have a, a flagship player that Cameron Simmons will be sort of she's sort of a, a name to build a club around, you know, I, I don't think we could have asked for a better player to sort of lead this club into a, you know, it's first, it's first season. I don't know what role she'll play sort of in the squad, but you know, the, the profile that she brings as a national team player for Jamaica, um, for the different college programs she's played for, I think it's, it's a great name to land and her star will only continue to rise. I can only imagine. Um, and so long term, I think it's really, really great to have a name like that associated with the club. Obviously, a name like 
that Garbron has not did not necessarily lead the Richmond Kickers destiny into the halls of women's soccer um, history, but maybe that will be different with a player like Ken Simmons as um, you know, on the roster. Elliot, do you want to talk a little bit more about why you're excited that Cam is joining the squad? Oh, I mean, one, she played in the World Cup, so that already makes us better than half of the teams in uh, the, our division. Um, she's Jamaican. She's the future of the Jamaican women's national team. She plays at Florida State, who is uh, Jamaica FC 2.0. Um, I've already mentioned she's Jamaican. Um, from, from, the, from the meanest Jamaican neighborhood of Midlothian. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, tough streets out there, baby. Um, Greg Simmons proved once again that he has a legitimate chance of saying that uh, he is the true uh, kicker's family of royalty. Because last I checked, Rob ain't have a kid yet to play for the kickers. Greg already got two. And what has scored? Nick scored last year. So, uh, you know, Greg played for the kickers. Nick played. The, the daughter's playing. I'm just saying. Greg got a pipeline, and I love the fact that the kickers are involved in it. I, I was just so scared that, like, because obviously we're pushing this, and I feel like I should get some percentage of the credit that we got her to come to the W League, you know, because I was really pushing this since the World Cup, even before that. I was like, yo, she, she needs to come here. Like, get oh, her I, here. I think it was definitely all of our – you know, tweets tagging her and everything, you know, early on, like as soon as they mentioned the team, like, all right, this needs to be player one. This needs to be player one. <laughs> like, uh, you know, you know, creepy old guys and, you know, Kate, you know, you know, okay. That, that almost came out, came out of the mouth wrong. Yeah, you know? that, that did. That did. <laughs> uh, but, you know, mentioning her, you know, on you know, Twitter and, uh, I think we deserve all the credit for this. Yeah. Now the next goal is to get Nick part of the Jamaican national team set up and have him drive us to the future. And Are that you, way I live in ever blessed happiness. I mean, he could also like change his commitment or decide not to go to college. That'd be cool. No. I mean, he's already committed to UVA, but no, right. I need him in Jamaica. USA already got a whole bunch of strikers. I, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I wasn't there. talking about that. I just don't want him to go into UVA. Oh, oh. Yeah, you're gonna have to take that up with him. <laughs> but yeah, so um I'm happy. That yeah. that would definitely be the jersey I get is is hers. Like whatever that jersey yeah. drop. Oh, uh, no, seriously, I think another thing out of this, like all the stuff you all said, you know, she started at you know Tennessee, you know, and the coach that you know recruited her to Tennessee, like almost immediately bolted to Florida State, and now he's dragged her with him. Yeah, you know, right. A year later, and everything. I, if you're at a national championship, you know, winning school, you don't drag you know your players with you unless you think they're actually worthwhile. You know, yeah. so I'm not going to say it's a guarantee of anything, but it's definitely a good sign that you know uh, there's a coach out there that trusts her that much. You know, to be able to bring her along to you know a, a program that's actually you know reach and surpassed UNC, which I think nobody ever thought would happen in women's soccer. So. Yeah. And also, you know how freaking talented you got to be to get minutes in a World Cup? Like, not just give me minutes. Like, she played in that important game. Um, the game against Brazil, she played, and the game against France, she played, and almost scored in the Brazil game. So, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. But yeah, that's my happiness. Next, our next uh, project on this pod will be getting a Jamaican women's national team game played here in Richmond and the stadium. So that. Well, <laughs> Jamaica FA got a lot to fix before we get there. Yeah. We got to start paying we will, people we first. Will <laughs> fundraise. We will crowdfund getting the Jamaican women's national team. So also, my selfishly as well, because two of the players on the Jamaican women's national team play for Tottenham Hotspur women, and I would, I would love to be able to shake their hand at the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> so so Ellie, you're, you're saying the game will be used to you not getting you paid by the W League team either? <laughs> yeah, probably. She's already the guy. I'm used to it. Yeah, <laughs> she's got to get IL 
money. Face of the Jamaican program. Face She's gonna be, she's gonna be comfortable now. <laughs> none, of this new, none of this new environment of I get cash now. No, this is what she knows. We're good. <laughs> she's getting paid in cash app and Venmo. That's all. <laughs> Do NIL deals. <laughs> we can't even oh, invite that free beer no. to tailgate. Too young. Here's a water cooler. Oh. <laughs> Capri uh, Suns. We shouldn't do that for the first game. Just come up with Capri Suns <laughs> and orange juices. Like, good job, kids. Proud of y'all. Um, so yeah, like we kind of mentioned earlier, Brand Reveal is uh March 13th. Um I you we were talking about player? earlier. Huh? Oh, I thought we already did. My fault. Kate, okay, who's the other player that we signed? We we, we Our- mentioned you know, the greatest. Yes. So. Cam Cam has been a project for us for a while. So of course we had a lot of excitement, but we're we're super excited about the second player that was um announced um just a few days ago. Um Jill Flamia. Haven't haven't done a name pronunciation um there, but she plays for Yay. Um really, really exciting stuff. She's involved in the um youth national team program as well more recently um so some love seeing the connection already with programs like uva with family connections like cameron simmons um we're hoping these aren't front loaded too heavily in terms of you know the programs that are being brought in and the quality of player um being brought in because you know we've got two sort of starters in their major college programs um with really great numbers goal scored assists um minutes you know even from like early on in their college careers so really really exciting and um we obviously haven't learned we what we're continuing to ask questions about what sort of the recruiting process looks like who's having these conversations but it definitely reflects really really well on madeline and on kimmy that you know they're bringing players of this caliber into the program before the program even really exists um so and two players who look like they will contribute clearly to Kimmy's vision of playing, you know, attacking minded, um, goal oriented, but still possession based um, system. So um, yeah, it's looking, it's looking very exciting so far. So we'll have to wait and see, um, you know, in what drip or flow we get the rest of the signings. As we were saying, we're going to need a pretty deep uh, bench for how tight, tight the games are in the back half of the season. Um, so wonder, you know, what's the frequency we'll start hearing additional names and yeah, whether or not the programs will stay at this caliber or, you know, we'll, whether we'll start getting youth players or players um, past their collegiate years um, involved in the program as well. So very, very, very good signs. A lot of excitement um, from these two players from Cam and Jill um, and tempering managing our expectations to not um you know, get too too into the into the stars but um really good signs for um yeah how well recruitment is going the conversations that are being had and the the quality of player interested in representing w league rba okay how do you think we do this year what is your expectation for us to play oh, i was gonna ask you <laughs> It's tough because the two top teams in the division last year were really damn good. So I, I, I didn't look too closely at the other divisions to see, you know, my major liars in terms of quality sort of concentrated at the top. Um, so we could, I don't know if we'll be unlucky in that we've, you know, come into a, a really, really good division in W league, which will make it sort of more challenging um, overall to have a, a, like a, a winning season. Um, but Kimmy's confident, and with these two signings, I'm feeling I'm starting to feel confident, at least from a, a, a player side. Um, but <laughs> the Golden Boot from last year's season played for Christos, and she scored 21 goals. So we will. <laughs> so there's that happening in our division. Well, you did say um, one of the teams that disappeared was like a minus 60, you know, in a 10 game season or something stupid like that. So I wonder how many of them. Got stacked so maybe they'll them. fold. Maybe they'll unexpectedly fold in the next month, and we won't have to worry about it. But we definitely—I uh, think we're going to have to bring a high-level 
to this division in order to compete at the top. And at least from what we're hearing, that seems to be the goal um, from the players we've seen. So I'm going to feel confident, but I would say my, my expectations have been tempered now that I've looked into the division and seen how successful the top two teams were, um, which were both a little bit of uh, uh, a project as well. You know, they have, they've had two seasons to get to where they are. Um, So I'm feeling confident, but I wonder if, if we were in a different division, depending on how our results go, if we like, if we might just have also ended up in a tough division. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, two, yeah, two players into it about as good as you can ask for, you know, two players with, uh, you know, varying levels of international, you know, experience, uh, you know, playing for high quality, uh, you know, college programs, you know, right now. And, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying about okay, there's a couple of really good teams coming back, but I mean, with, without having actually seen what those you know teams look like, were they actually good or was just the, everybody else just you know hot fire trash? You know yeah. what what's the scenario? So yeah, so far so good. Uh, also looking up you know, stuff again. This is something that just making me you know feel super old because since when do good soccer players come from Gooshland? Right. Uh, about as much as Jamaican national team is born in Melothian. Yes. I don't, yeah. Like, back, back in my day, you know, Gushin was all the hillbillies. They were playing soccer out there. Send all angry emails to Matt and RPA. <laughs> yeah. Again, back in my day. Back in my day. You know, back, back when like, Lauderdale Road was the end of the earth, short pump. And nobody goes to short pump. Oh God! Yeah, that brings back some memories. It's weird. I know I'm about to derail this real quick, but just growing up in Richmond, and I had to explain to my wife like short pump was just like a massive wasteland to like maybe the mid 2000s. She didn't believe me until I showed her photos. I was like, "Yeah, it, it was used to be nothing there." Yeah. Wow. That's that just a testament, a testament to the recruitment. They're they're turning over stones, you know, at all corners of the earth. Right. All the t- all the stones overturned at Richmond United. There we go. Um, so, yeah, that's the women. Um, oh. Kate, your predict. Well, you already gave your prediction. Matt, what do you think? Uh, what are the six teams in the league? Top two, top three, something like that, probably. But okay. you know, no way Charlottesville is going to be good. There's no way a team in Winchester, Virginia is going to be good. Get them out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's no way two teams in the middle of Pennsylvania be good. Like, I'm guessing all the good players are going to Eagle and Lancaster will be just awful. Uh, so, yeah, we're set up pretty good already. Yeah. I would say top three would be my goal as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll go top three. I think top three would be considered a good season. I think so. Um, I just I want to be Christos. That's that's my be Christos. That's it. Um, all right, so we got that W League stuff there. So make sure you keep up. Uh, once again, Kate is the beat reporter for them, so make sure you give her a follow because she'll be tweeting and telling her all that stuff about the uh soon to be named W League team. Uh, we'll be there to brand of it. Um, another announcement came out today. Um, Kickaroo has made an announcement that the red jerseys will be back. It didn't on, say that uh, technically. It didn't say that technically, but that is the premise that is being made. Everyone has been saying, I guess Darren has said it multiple times, Camp has said it. There's they gave a date, February 29th, which is weird because that's a leap year. A day that doesn't really exist. <laughs> yeah. So who knows who New Jersey really exists or not? Um I hope they're good. They need to be red. I have made the statement before, and I'll say it again. They need to be as red as River Road. And if you know about River Road, it is really red for different reasons. I need to be that red. <laughs> like, I need to be red. I will say this, though. There has been some nice Adidas templates out there. Just going to throw this out there, and I want to see what you guys think. What do you guys think about a center crust? 
generally not a fan. All right. Like, it, it can work sometimes, but I feel like the overall majority of the time it doesn't work. I wouldn't, I don't want to be chasing another viral moment. So I wouldn't want it to be happening. Just, I don't want to, I don't want the purpose of the jersey to be called drippy again because I think <laughs> the pursuit of drip let us down a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You couldn't, you couldn't see it. It let us down um, a path. That like our season. That's what happened. Those jerseys were a representation of our season. It was a great yes. idea. And the execution was poor. Mm -hmm. So, so poor. any yeah, jersey choices that are more in pursuit of uh, yeah, a, a viral moment. Um, let's just stick to the stick to tradition. In this case, please, especially after becoming the bane of the UL League One commentators and um, TV viewers alike. Um, the basics. Let's get back. What we yeah. know and love. Also, also, just to clarify, Elliot's statement earlier: real red, not this uh, midnight red that they tried to pass off last year. It was black. Let, we, all, just, yes, we all know that. We all know that. It was black. <laughs> right. Black. So I'm just, I'm just saying they have priors on uh, they're trying <laughs> to you know pull pull a fast one on all of us. That's why I said I needed to be as red as River Road. I, how red that area is? I mean, that You're red. Saying River Road, not very black. <laughs> uh -huh. Just saying. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what the jersey looks like. Um, from <laughs> the staff's opinion, they said it looks really good, but uh, yeah. they also said last year's jersey was red, and it wasn't red. I'll never the forget. Uh, drip to red. I need this to reorient away from drip, away from viral away from chasing yeah, yeah, yeah. that they gotta start back because they were building some good will, will in some of the jerseys and yeah, then last year's was just bad. let's go back yeah. to the 2020 template simple red logo done i'm not gonna lie the 2020 jerseys were pretty solid the way kit was nice i just wished it went all the way around to the back but it, it was nice that was not a bad template um i'm still mad i never got that jersey I should have gotten it when we had the chance. <sighs> Disappointment. But um, mm -hmm. all right, y'all. Also, kickers have played uh two preseason games so far. Um, we're not gonna break down those games because don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were just there mostly. I was there for a carrot top, um, who I hope the kicker signed. Um I really uh, man, man has a man has a name, we've discovered him. I don't care what his name is. I'm going to call him Carrot Top. <laughs> but what's his name? Uh, internet research suggests his name is Dylan Lane you know, from Furman University, which uh, okay. he needs to sign and just score in Greenville now. So they're playing at you know, that you know big-ass football stadium of theirs, and he can go in there and just dagger them. Yeah. Wouldn't that be yeah. fun? It'll be our own version of getting Lobovitz. Like how they took Lobovitz right oh, Worse, I worse. I mean, tech that's way off in the corner. <laughs> that's true. That is very true. Um, yeah, I mean the first two preseason games seem pretty well. I think the biggest thing is no injuries. Um didn't lose. <laughs> didn't lose. Uh I think we chanted after the first one against VCU. We have won a game, so we are happy now. <laughs> As of most of you, Johnny. Well, yeah, I mean, they beat VCU and they beat um, Alexandria Reds. Um, I know it was supposed to be another team. I forgot who it was supposed to be, but they um, they played Alexandria Reds, won five to one. Um, Gabe was at that game. Um, Matt, let me ask you this because uh -oh. I know this is the collective disdain that you have. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chandler O'Dwyer, center back, happened. Do you want the? I ball? have no actual proof of that. I wasn't. I have not seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> hold on, hold on. How are you putting that all on me? <laughs> Did you kind of drive the bus on that one, man? You got to admit. I yeah, because now I'm. I'm I think you are a uh, prime co-pilot on that one. Like there are there are some <laughs> I will own. You know, <laughs> I will absolutely own some of them. But I think I, uh, you know, you are. 
if not the actual pilot, you know, prime co-pilot, you know, one A on that boat. Yeah, I'm a good co-pilot on that one. Um, but yeah, I, I let you I let you drive the boat on that that one. Um, yeah, we we don't need to see this experiment. I get no, it, well, it's preseason. Center forward, put him at center forward instead. Yeah, he's, he's Scott McTominay. We have discovered this. He is Scott McTominay of Richmond. <laughs> Play him up top. <laughs> Make him Flush. the super sub. Make him the loop for bone that you let go. There you go. Do, do we going to throw a little gas on the fire real fast? Do we start to worry sure. that it looks like both games uh, Emmy didn't play? Uh, I'm not too concerned about it. I'm at, not too because I'm, I'm. At I'm what point thinking, do you want to see you know a picture of him on the field? You know. None well, really. I don't. I don't really. I don't. I. I don't know. Mm, you you got to at least want to know that he's actually like healthy again, yeah. right? I want to say the last two. Like, if you treat it like the NFL preseason, like the la- the second to last preseason game, give them twenty minutes, take them off, and then the last one, give them forty five, take them off. If you're treating oh. like the NFL preseason, if you're playing him the last two games, that means you're never going to see that man again. Unless you're, you know, going over to, you know, the Home Depot or something. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're right. Oh, um, I do wonder. Both of these matches have been on turf. Um, like whether or not <clears throat> any of the pre- matches will be on grass, and we'll see. just because there's so much higher, like whether or not there's an element of if, when you're playing on turf. Obviously, the likelihood or the possibility of injuries is a lot higher especially for someone who might be coming back, um, could be sort of like a risk avoidance on playing on. Because for everyone who doesn't know, kickers play on the most beautiful grass in the league. So And that is proven because we got voted for that. Mm-hmm. One something. So I would be interested to see if they play on any higher quality grass fields, if that's when we start seeing them, just because that, that can be a consideration. Ain't going to be Saturday then if they're playing at Segra. No, it's not right. Um, but I mean, uh, what Arthur's getting the majority of the starts right now. Um, I think the not, I don't know if he played Wednesday, but I know on Saturday, Landon Johnson didn't dress. That's one kind of concerns me a little bit more. Um, because I don't know what's going on there, but maybe it was just like, hey, just get the rest here and we'll play you. So he may he might have played Wednesday. I don't know. I wasn't there, but yeah. Let me see. Hopefully, do you got? Hopefully, there are more signings. Like, we need another left back because Maxie's going to get a red card within the first ten games. But when well, Beckett's there, need another left back. Already throwing <laughs> him, throwing him, you know, over the side. No, I'm not. I'm just saying. Just I. I think you want another, another right back first. Oh yeah. Yeah, go get another right back. Just get a fullback, Darren. Just get yeah. another fullback. Get like two Game. more wingers. And there you go. I mean, do you just want to say the the elephant in the room on the winger side? Yeah. What? Don't have any. I mean, well, the, the guy who we all know who who he is, who was playing for us on Saturday. <laughs> His hair. Oh yeah. Oh. Who? Oh. EVD, yeah. Yeah. By the way, I, it took me twenty minutes to realize that was EVD. That hair is luscious. It's like a lattice top. It is nice. Right. I mean, I saw that the team released all their promotional nights for the year. No, they need to scrap one of those. She a pet night, featuring yeah. Ethan Decker. Yeah, that's what that's what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he looked pretty electric out there in the preseason game, so. Yeah. Hopefully he yeah. stays healthy. Yeah, it was that whole thing where you know it takes a full like what is it like eighteen months or you know so to really come back from those kind of injuries. And yeah. we, we know you can you know he's up to the USL one standard you know pre injury so. <laughs> might be nice. Might be nice. Might be nice. So yeah, he might be one of the signings. I just need I need a fullback. I need another winger. Um, you had your guy yeah. Rex playing right back Saturday. Oh, oh yeah. 
<laughs> I want him to sign. So for those who don't know, yo, I, he probably a kid. He probably like 16, 17, maybe. But he had glasses on. But they were like these cool shades. And I really hope we sign him just so I can see him play a league one game with these shades. It would be dope. It would be dope. He also didn't look bad out there either, which is no, he didn't. That's the most important thing outside of the glasses. Yeah. Outside of the glasses. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that yeah. I'm forgetting? Yeah. But, uh, the announcement yesterday, you know, June 26th. Oh, yeah. Kick, kickers versus Lions Bridge. So this is – so I, I've been on the front office very openly, you know, about, <laughs> uh, you know, the change in schedule and the season ticket package as a result. So uh, they've come up with a game 16 for us. You know, it'll be a, it's a Wednesday game. Not thrilled about that one. Uh but you know, the game against Lions Bridge, it'll you know, be a friendly. So good, a good you know, USL two team right down the road. A lot of the, some of their fans come up to Cares games anyway. So is it the perfect you know make good? Maybe not necessarily. Is it better than it could have been? Absolutely. I would maybe prefer to just you know give us the first Open Cup game if we had it, uh, rather than just. A midweek game sandwiched between two league games, uh, which means probably be a lot of reserves playing. But they came good. They came good. So I'll credit where credit is due. They came good on it. That's in the middle of their season too, right? Yeah, yeah. They have a Saturday, Saturday around it as well. So okay, that's not bad. Yeah, no, it should be fun. For those who didn't go to the last one, which was that was twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah. For the first one, um, it is it, it, it was a vibe. It was fun. Like me and Shanae were down there. We recorded. That's when that's when John interrupted us in the middle of the podcast and yelled out nerds. Dude, I, um, I was listening to that one, uh, in Aust- driving in Australia. So literally on the other side of the road. So I was already you know, having to concentrate more than I needed to just to stay centered. And then all that's you know happening you know in my ears. It's it was an experience. I believe it. I believe it. It's literally the soundbite. I need to clip that soundbite and just put it into the intro some way. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so <clears throat> it's a real fun team. I mean, Lions Bridge is a real kind of cool rivalry there with them. I wouldn't say it's a rivalry, but real cool competitiveness between the two teams. I wish that we could play them more, but now we are. Um and they're they're a solid team. Like they went to the final. They were a PK away from winning the USL League Two last year. They got some good players. We had one from uh, Matt Bentley and Simon Fitch as well playing the Lions Bridge. So it's a cool little pipeline down there. And their coach is like really good. Like you know, just whatever. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if Darren steps down and moves on to greener pastures, you know, like if the Seattle job opens up. And Seattle MLS is like, hey, Darren, come home. You know, Lions British coach is right there. And I think that would be a good person to kind of pull. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will show up for it. A lot of people should. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Like, it's, don't worry too much about the game. Like Matt said, it's going to be reserves. But the atmosphere, the tailgating is going to be it's going to be great. I'll, I'll, I will not be in town and I will be, I'm very sad that I'll be missing it and that I'll be missing what? another thing of my, <clears throat> my season ticket per game price is going up every hour for both Dilly League and Kickers. Uh, that, that is your fault. <laughs> yeah. You plan stuff in the summer. You, you have to learn eventually. Right. Vacations are meant for November through February. Yeah. <laughs> That, that is your time. <laughs> After that, nothing else exists besides kickers and W League. Unless you're willing to really wait it out and see when the bye weeks might be. <laughs> yeah, true. You can also go that route. Yep. But, um, guys, I think that's fantastic. I think we're doing enough podcasting to keep the masses uh, wanting more. Um, but, yeah. So, anything else before we uh, wrap up the show? 
No. no. Okay. Awesome. Um, so with that being said, for Kate, for Matt, myself, um, we just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day for listening to our podcast. Because without you, we couldn't do this. Um, so once again, we'll be at the branding event on the 13th. Make sure you're there. And uh, with that being said, we'll holler at you guys next time. Be easy, be safe. Holler at you guys later. Thank you.